Okay. Welcome, remote learners. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Occasionally, um, in addition to that question, we will start the day sometimes with a devotion. And there was a really good one for today, so I'm just going to read it to you. Um, this is a book by Max Licato. Uh, there's one devotion for every single day of the year. And today's uh, was pretty good, and I thought it was really applicable to everything. So we'll just go through that for August 25th. This world stinks sometimes. There's confusion and there's sadness in this world. There's hunger in this world. There are cancer and divorce and death in this world. And sometimes you're going to pray about things and the prayer isn't going to be answered the way that you want. But Jesus predicted the bad stuff. He said, in this world, you will have trouble. It's as if he were telling us, don't freak out when things get extreme. If he can predict the problem, he can solve it. Somewhere between the naive optimists and the doom and gloomers are the sober, honest disciples of Christ who don't panic or lose faith at the presence of problems. They know that all these problems are a natural unfolding of events, part of the plan God laid out long ago. Our mission is to trust and endure. We're headed for the embrace of heaven, where nothing bad will ever happen again. A couple of good things to keep in mind there. So, in terms of Schoology, This is what it looks like for physics. You can see these are all our, these are our four units. Within each unit, there are different chapters. Uh, we start in light and sound, and we'll, we'll be talking about how light behaves like a particle. So if I open this folder, you would see light as a particle in there, along with all the assignments you're going to get for that section. Uh, so that's where that's going to be located. Everything is going to be right here. You will also notice that uh, the assignments are posted as assignments on Schoology. You do not need to do anything with that. Those, those are the, for the remote learners. Uh, they'll be taking pictures of their homework and then uh, submitting them in that way. But the assignments will be there for you, so at least you can see it on your calendar when things are due. But you don't actually need to do something on Schoology for that. If we go full remote, of course, you'll have to do what remote people are doing. Uh, you'll have to take pictures of your work and, and submit it. So that'll be there for you. Uh, in terms of the answer keys, of course, those are going to be down here. The syllabus for the class is in here, which we'll go over in just a little while. Um, so yeah, when you see updates uh, that come through for the class, you know, this here are you know, the notes for worksheet three uh, are what we did today. And worksheet four, worksheet three is due tomorrow or whatever. That's mostly for the remote learners because you're going to hear that in class. The main thing for you on Schoology for right now is just use the assignments and the assigned dates so that you can remind yourself when they're all due. Any questions on that? Okay. When you come into class, if you want to wipe down your table, you're more than welcome to. That's what this is for right here. Hand sanitizer is located right there. So feel free to do that if, some, if that's something that you want to uh, do. In terms of the actual uh, material for this class, um, I'm not a big fan of textbooks. I feel like my job as, as a teacher is to take all of, like, if you look in the back, there are physics textbooks back there in maroon. And that's a bunch of material. And honestly, when you go through this class, if I went through the textbook, how much of that are you going to remember and carry with you the rest of your life? Like, maybe a page or two, if it had a cool picture on it. But you're not going to remember a vast majority of what comes out of there. So I kind of feel like my job as a teacher is to take that material, boil it down to what's really important, and try and get you to learn that as best as I can. So in terms of textbooks, we don't really we don't have them in this class. You're free to take them if you want to use it as a resource as we go through these sections. If you want to have something extra to read. But to do well on the tests and the quizzes and everything else, all you got to do is make sure that you take good notes in class. Um, and if you miss a day, the notes will be available here too. So uh, that's the main thing. As long as you're able to be in class and, and pay attention and all that good stuff, you're going to do just fine. 
but you don't need a textbook, but if it does make you feel more comfortable to have one, feel free to grab one. That's totally cool. Uh, in terms of what this class is all about, we'll go through that right now. I feel like I should probably shouldn't hand out as much. I should hand out the least amount of things that I can for obvious reasons. So I'm not going to hand out a syllabus. Uh, there is one thing that I will hand out in a little while after we're done going through this. Uh, you'll see what that is shortly. So physics is freaking awesome. It's a really, really cool subject because you encounter it every single day. So even if you're not into science, you are seeing physics every single day of your life. Um, we'll be launching rockets, building bridges, smashing those bridges, starting fires, dropping eggs, shooting lasers. Uh, also have a remote control PT cruiser over there, which we'll have a good amount of time with. Why is it awesome? It's the study of the physic, physics, physical laws that God made for our universe and world. It's awesome because it's the study of everything that we take for granted, from the lights, as I mentioned, to why you hear things, how you're able to take uh, sound and actually interpret it as something that has meaning. So all the stuff you don't think about, uh, it, it talks about all that, and we think hard about that simple stuff. In terms of what to have in this class, pencils, erasers, a scientific calculator, uh, these are all things that are good. You do not need a graphing calculator for this class. I actually don't use one myself. I've never really liked graphing calculators unless I absolutely need them. So I just have a little scientific calculator that I like to use. Um, try not to use pens because eventually we get to a point in this class where we have problems where you're take, it takes more than one or two lines to do them, and you'll probably make a mistake every once in a while. And it doesn't really look all that good if you're squiggling out all your work and then, you know, writing stuff underneath it. I strongly encourage you to bring pencils to class and to use pencils. Uh, if you don't have any, there are some in the back, as I'll remind you again when we take a tour of the room. Um, let's see here, in terms of difficulty. So physics, it's a difficult class. There's a lot of stuff that we talk about. And again, one of the things that you can do to help yourself with that is go through those notes again that you take in class, come in and ask me questions, um, go back on Schoology and go through the, the lectures and the lessons that I'm going to post there. Every single one that we do up here is going to be on Schoology. So if you don't get something, you can go through uh, at your own pace and look at that. The other thing is on Schoology, uh, in the particular section that we're in, I'll just go there right now and show you. If we go under light and sound, we'll be starting um, with light as a particle tomorrow. Actually, not tomorrow, the next day. So this is just going to show you what to expect here. We've got some readings, we've got some notes, we've got some homework, some pictures and stuff. And then you see this thing right here with that weird little symbol. It says concave mirrors. What that is, is it's a presentation that goes through step by step uh, some really good general problems for this particular section. So eventually we look at mirrors that are like curved and stuff. And we talk about how the light rays bounce all over with those things. And this tells us, it's going to show you exactly step by step how those light rays bounce and where to draw them. So if that's another resource you can go to if you struggle with this particular lesson. So that's what those are. Back to the, back to the syllabus. I already mentioned about how uh, class is going to start usually with a question on the whiteboard there. So make sure that you're in your seat working on that as best you can when class begins. Um, homework, you're going to get that every other day or so. And the way homework is graded in this class is based on whether or not you actually attempted it with, with a good amount of effort. Um, we go through the homework sometimes in class. Uh, either way, the answer keys are, are going to be posted online on Schoology after we go through them in class. So you've always got those answer keys available if you're struggling with something like that. 
Uh, but yeah, you don't have to worry about getting everything absolutely correct the first time through. I don't want you to stress out about that, but at the same time, I want to make sure you're putting in that time and effort to do the very best you can. So as long as everything is attempted, that means you're going to get full credit on that piece of homework. And I come around and I check that at the very beginning of the class that it's due. So you got to make sure that you're all set with that. Questions on homework? Okay. Quizzes. There's usually a quiz or two for each section. Activities. We'll talk more about those as they come up. We've usually got one or two activities for each section, too. Tests. Uh, these are important. They're at the end of each chapter that we, that we cover, and they're 30 to 40 points each. So about 5 to 10 points per homework, 15 to 20 for a quiz, and tests are between 30 and 40, depending on how much stuff is on there. So in terms of tests, and this is an important part, there are no retakes on tests. You have to make sure that you are as set as possible uh, for these tests when they come up. Every day before, obviously, we're going to have a review session, so it's important to be there for that, and it's also important to, if, if you're struggled with it, to watch that video uh, on Schoology after it's made. But uh, you want to make sure that you are all set to go for these tests. And I'm more than, more than happy to have you come in and go through as many example problems as you'd like until you feel comfortable. So don't ever feel like, you know, because even though I haven't had most of you in class before, don't ever feel like you're uncomfortable coming in to get help. I, I enjoy physics, I enjoy teaching it, and I would be more than happy to go through as many examples as you need. So don't ever feel any hesitation to do that. Extra credit. You can get extra credit in two ways in this class. Number one, every section we have a Mythbusters day. Uh, and that Mythbusters episode is going to go along with the particular section that we're in. So because we're going to be talking about light, there's going to be a Mythbusters episode that has something to do with light. And I pass out a sheet that has the myths on them beforehand, and you have to, you have to figure out and just guess, busted, plausible, or confirmed, uh, before we start the show. And once you have those in, every one you get right, you get an extra credit point for that. That's a kind of fun little thing to look forward to each section. The other way to get extra credit is to write on something physics related. If you do that, every half page will be worth one point of extra credit, double spaced of course. Uh, and that's another way to build up some points. Whiteboarding, we'll talk about that later. This is going to be a little bit different compared with, with what's going to be new this year because of the pandemic. So um, respect, responsibility, obviously you guys are juniors and seniors. I don't need to mention anything about that, I don't think. In terms of leaving to go to the bathroom and stuff, uh, one person can leave at a time. Uh, normally, the permanent hall passes by the door. Obviously, we don't want that to get all germy and stuff. So everybody's just going to be given their own pass. If you really need to go to the bathroom, let me know. I'll fill this out for you. And, um, you know, just come back as soon as you can. Try to, try to limit this to, like, one per week because it takes me a while to fill each one of these out. Uh, and, you know, you don't want to you don't want to miss stuff in class so missing tests and quizzes should be made up no later than two days after the missed day so if you're gone and we take a quiz or a test make that up ASAP uh, the longer you wait the worse you're gonna do <laughs> I mean I don't know each of you individually but I do know that since I've started teaching um, every time students take a long time to make those things up they do progressively worse yes No, you can take it before if you're comfortable. Absolutely. Uh, late work is not cool. You automatically lose 40% for late work. All that means is make sure you have stuff done when you get to class. Uh, and obviously, I'll give you as, mu as much warning as I can. You know, your homework is due tomorrow. Make sure you have it done. It'll be on Schoology. The assignment will be on Schoology. It should pop up with a little thing on your calendar that you've got homework due. So you want to make sure that you have that done and taken care of. It's a, good, it's a good idea to get in the habit of using that calendar, uh, even if you haven't too much up to this point. All right. Good. Questions on the syllabus? Cool. Good. Okay. 
I am going to pass out to you now one of the probably the most important thing you're going to get for this class. And that is the physics formula sheet. All the equations that we use in this class can be found on this single document. And one of the cool things uh, that we do with these equations, you've probably seen them around school, we make physics formula shirts every year in physics. And what we do is we take the formula sheet, and this side here is the one that you'll be using for most of the year. What we do is we take that side, we flip it upside down and put it on the front of the t-shirt so that you can look down and read the formulas. And that way you can do that during the test and you can bring the sheet. So that's the sort of thing that we have some fun with in physics. I'm also going to pass out a sheet that tells you exactly what all the little letters on this page mean. saying on the back of the physics t-shirt too. So if you're a creative person, can you start thinking of cool little phrases we can throw back there? Uh, what we did two years ago was um, take me old country road. Chris Holman's like a physics fan. Uh, last year's was I'm not lazy, I'm full of potential. So you kind of get the idea. It's a fun little thing that we do. So don't lose your formula sheet. But if you do, I have a ton of spares. But it's the most important document you'll get there. Okay, a couple other things. Okay. So, again, in terms of textbooks, you don't need one, but they're there if you want them. Uh, study the notes. If you're struggling with something, go on Schoology, check out those um, past lectures that are going to be posted there, and the tutorials that are there as well, with that little, like, yellow square. That's what those mean. Obviously, in class, I uh, want to make sure that we're all respectful, no swearing or anything like that. When you pass your homework in, at the beginning of, of class when it's due, or actually, I'm going to come around and I'm going to stamp it. And uh, if it's all the way done, you get a full star stamp. If it's almost, if, if it looks like you got halfway through or something, you'll get partial credit. And that's a little bit different thing I do with the stamp there. And if it's not done at all, uh, then you get that 40% off. So again, make sure that you are keeping up with the homework and watching that, that calendar. Quizzes and tests are not handed back in this class. Uh, the reason for that is I used to do that, you know, like a good teacher, and uh, go through the ones that gave students trouble. But what ended up happening is um, I had some, some kids that were, after I handed them back, and I was turned around going through the problems, they were taking pictures of the test and the quiz. And I'll tell you, it takes a lot of time and effort to make a good test and quiz. And, uh, you know, I want to make sure that, that I don't have to do that every single year. So uh, that's why I don't hand them back. It's not that I don't trust you guys. It's just there's been some students in the past that kind of ruined it for everybody. So showing work in this class also is super important because oftentimes it's going to take a little bit of work to get to your actual answer. So you want to make sure that you get in the habit of showing all your work. And I'll be reminding you of that as we go along. So show all your work, not just the answer. Uh, one of the big reasons for that is because Physics is a big partial credit class. If you have a problem and it takes a couple steps to do it, three or four, then 
Uh, it's not like you get all those wrong, all those points wrong, if you get the wrong answer. Yeah, I follow along, and if you got three of the four steps right, you get three out of the four points. So you want to make sure you're showing all that work for your own sake. Uh, missing work. If I'm missing something from you, it's in the gradebook as a zero till I get it. So you want to make sure that you get everything into me as soon as you can. Once I do get it, that changes to whatever that grade's going to be, which brings me to my other really, really important point, and that is if you're absent and you turn something in the next day because you were absent, make sure that when you turn it in, you write something on the, just write the word absent on top of that homework sheet. Because I've got hundreds of students, I'm not going to remember that you were gone yesterday. Uh, so I would mark it late then because it was turned in late. So you want to make sure if you're handing something in, you know, late because you were gone the previous day, just write that you were absent on the very top, and I won't mark it. I won't mark it late. I won't grade it late. So do your best to remember that. I'll try and remind you of that a lot. And uh, yeah. In terms of phones, I normally would have students put your phones in there, but obviously you want to try and keep you guys away from being gathered together in groups in one location. So you can have your phones with you. Just make sure that you're not on them. I, I'd prefer that they not be out. Um, but yeah, if, if you're on your phone during class, uh, I'll call you out on that. So it's, it's probably best if, if they're put away. So yeah, just be responsible with that. Hall pass, we already talked about that. Again, try and aim for just once a week. Um, yeah. Oh, also, uh, you can only go the middle 20 minutes of class. You can't do it right at the beginning. You can't do it right at the end. Just those middle 20 minutes are the is the period of time when you can you know, use the restroom or something. Obviously, if it's an emergency, that's different. And if it's like, if, if you're about to hurl, don't say, Mr. Hathaway, I need a, a pass to go to the bathroom. Just run out the door and I'll trust you. Uh, so obviously, just use common sense. Um, in terms of testing, so for the tests for this class, you can, if you don't finish in time by the end of the hour, you're welcome to stay as long as you want. Uh, but once you start the test, you have to finish it in that sitting. Uh, you can't get halfway through and then come back the next day and finish it then, because you've seen the whole test. So make sure that you know you're, you are welcome to stick around as long as you want. Be happy to write uh, passes for your next class. Um, but yeah, you can't come back and finish it later. Questions on anything so far? Pretty straightforward. Good. When we hand things in, typically I have students pass them to the right and then forward. Um, my guess is I'll probably just collect them individually so you don't get all those germs and stuff. Uh, while I'm lecturing, you want to make sure that you're not talking uh, because if for no other reason, um, this is recording, like it's recording right now, uh, for the folks that are joining us at home. And you want to make sure that you're not talking because this has a very, very sensitive microphone and it can hear everything. So you want to make sure that you're not distracting the folks who are watching this virtually at home. In terms of grading, make sure that you are keeping up with your grades. Make sure that you don't fall behind. Uh, you guys are juniors and seniors, so I'm not going to be running after you if you're missing one or two things. Uh, if your grades start to slip, it's your responsibility to keep up with that and come see me and and be like, Mr. Hathaway, I need, I need some extra help. I'm, I'm totally cool giving anybody as much help as you want. I, I really enjoy the material, and I enjoy having you in class already, even though I can only see half your face. So don't ever feel bad about coming in like you're giving me extra work or something. That's what I'm here for. Come in and get extra help if you need it. Uh, talked about grading, talked about extra credit. The other thing is most of you I haven't seen before. I, I haven't had most of you in class until right now. So I know that you've already developed, you know, good strong relationships with other teachers and other coaches and stuff. And I'm like the new guy for you right now. But I just want to make sure that you know that my door is always open. Even though I don't know you that well, I hope to get to know you a little bit better over the course of the semester and, and the year. Uh, but even though we don't know each other too well, my door is always open. If you want to come in before school, after school, my open periods are 1 and 7. So if you want to come in and get extra help, 
if you want to come in and vent about your bad day, if you want to come in and talk about something totally unrelated to school, you're more than welcome to do that. Always feel free. Again, it's best to use pencils in this class. Um, and I'll take you a, a little tour of the room here. You can see where they're located if you don't bring one. Um, over here is just random stuff for my life if you want to be interested. Behind the glass here, and you can kind of use your imagination with this stuff, all of this is material that we are going to be using during the course of the year. And that includes the rocks. So just kind of think about where that might go, whether it's with light, or with motion, or with energy. There's so much to do in physics with this as well. If you ever need a little pick me up, there's some nice little motivational posters on the wall up there. So feel free to read those. Um, this is an important area. Again, I strongly urge you to use pencils so that you can erase your work if you make a mistake instead of scribbling it out. Spare pencils are here. Take them as you need. Pencil sharpener is here. Kleenex, calculators. And these are not graphing ones, they're little scientific ones. Um, this is an important place right here. The very top tray is labeled physics. This is where all the paper stuff goes that we do in class that I have extras of. So if you're gone on a certain date and we do something and I hand something out, it's going to be located right here. In addition to this spot, it's also on screen too. So do whatever you got to do with that. Three hole punch if you want to put stuff in your notes. Sink. Do not drink this water. You will get very sick and maybe die. Uh, up here, you've got uh, the Physics Hall of Fame. This has to do with some of the experiments that we're going to be doing, especially the end drop and the flow stroke. We'll get to those later in the year. This is astronomy. Um, telescope, nice little rocket there. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with Astronomy Club this year. I'm really discouraged from getting the group together in a room. But I'll think about it. More astronomy stuff. Well, hoping that never falls. Um, the <laughs> uh, lunch menu is right there. Fire extinguisher. If the room catches fire, and either I'm not in it or I'm the one on fire, you might have to go get that. Um, fire blanket, if one of you catches fire. Uh, garbage is here. I think I mentioned it. Did I mention the table wiping thing? I think that's, oh yeah, so the trays. When you, when you take things and pass them in, uh, third hour physics goes right here. So that's, if, if you're passing some stuff in, uh, in class, it's gonna be located on the right side. You know, hand in homework here, go right there. After I'm done putting it in the grade book and I give it back, it's gonna go on the left side, take back homework here, also in the second tray. And it's labeled third hour physics. Oof. I earnestly hope this is the most boring day of class. <laughs> um, what else we got here? Uh, all right. I'm just going to give a... I'll do a short introduction to what to expect in class. And then I'll tell you a little bit about myself. And then you'll be off to your next location. Yes. All right. So we're going to start our discussion in physics um, with light. One of the cool things about physics is that whenever you're dealing with light, you're dealing with physics. So one year, the science department got a, a decent amount of money, and I bought a bunch of black lights. I've got two more of these on the sides. And I hope that we can use them to like take notes and stuff on some days during the course of the year. It's a good time. Like you can't really see your notes good enough to write right now. But when those two things are on, it's a different story. So we'll be talking about light. Another thing we talk about are forces. 
by the end of the year, we start talking about the types of forces that have to do with circular motion. And of course, when we think about circular motion, uh, eventually you'll start thinking about things like tornadoes and that sort of thing. So that's something that we end up talking about near the end of the year. Obviously, you can see this fancy thing going whenever I talk. And uh, that's one of the things we'll be talking about closer to the beginning of the year is sound. How is it that when I talk pretty loudly like this, I don't put this on anymore. How is it that when I talk really loudly like this, it's going on, but if I whisper, nothing happens. What is going on here? And it's got another setting where it's just on all the time. Of course, another thing that has to do with light is lightning, which is freaking awesome. And of course, we're going to talk about that in physics too. And I think I just brought this up for the fun of it. Okay, that's not working. Whatever. Oh, we also talk about lasers. So that's a little preview of what to expect this year. As you'll find out over the course of the year, I really enjoy teaching physics and all my other classes, really. So hopefully you get at least some enjoyment out of it, because I'm going to get a lot of enjoyment out of it. So a little bit about me. So I was born in 1983, and uh, that makes me 36, I think, and still all original parts. In 1983, things were a little bit different. This was kind of a standard, like, band album cover back in 1983. Uh, you probably recognize some of these movies. They were from 1983. I was a Hulkamaniac growing up. He was huge back then. And I was a huge Larry Bird fan. And, uh, yeah, which is why I'm a Celtics fan right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, when I was really little, anybody know what this thing is? Aside from the name tag, Teddy Ruxpin. So the th what this guy did is you'd put a cassette tape in his back, and he would narrate a story for you. And his eyes would, like, blink, and his mouth would move. So, like, looking back, it was kind of demonic, but it was a good time for a little kid. Uh, this, was the, this was the church I, I grew up in. This is about 100 miles north of here, um, Trinity Lutheran in Nina. And I went to Trinity Lutheran School, preschool through eighth grade right there. While I was a little kid, I liked watching cartoons. Ghostbusters was a big one, Batman the Animated Series, original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I never quite grew out of that either. Uh, this is my wife and I here with two of our friends at uh, one of those turtle movies from a couple of years ago. We have fun. <laughs> turtles just scared me so. <laughs> Also played some video games, obviously, Mario right there. Street Fighter was probably my favorite one of all time. Sonic the Hedgehog was a good one. And by the time I got to high school, the PS1 was out, and I got into the Resident Evil games, if anyone's familiar with those. That was a long time ago, though, by now. About 20 years or so. So Oshkosh North High School is where I went to school for, for high school. Um, I went from a class of 25 kids in my 8th grade class at my Lutheran school to a class of 425 at uh, the Oshkosh Public School there. This was my car in high school. Wasn't it a beauty? This is the exact one. I played basketball. We were also the Spartans. That was kind of cool. I was in the musicals, worked at the movie theater. That's the inside, what it used to look like anyway. Uh, this, was, uh, this was fun. This was a Batman promotion we did for Batman Begins back in 2005 when you guys were, what, five? Four? Two? Okay. <laughs> so um, that was a fun movie. I ended up marrying her about 13 years after that. 
Um, I dressed up as Batman. I'd wave at kids as they'd walk in the theater. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> and we actually, we did a little skit, too, before the movie started in the front of the theater. We had this whole thing choreographed. It was awesome. I also, when I was in high school, my parents got the internet. That was fun. Uh, then I went to college. This is UW Oshkosh. Uh, I also got my first cell phone. looked exactly like that. And I completed my physics degree with a professional emphasis with hopes of becoming a scientist, which I did, and um, landed here in Muscaday, Wisconsin. Uh, stayed there for a few months, decided I just wasn't feeling it, you know? I wasn't really passionate about what I was doing there. I was passionate about the stuff I learned in school. So I went back to get licensed to teach physics and astronomy and, and different sciences. So I went back to college, went back to the movie theater, had some more good times, and the rest is history. So uh, this is my brother and I. Uh, what we like to do during the summer is, man, I only got 35 seconds. We have some fun in the summer. I like to play softball, basketball. I like to run, uh, play darts. I'm married. That's my wife. And that's our little baby that we had in October. His name is John. Hey, excuse the interruption. Teachers, if you did not know, we are back online and everything should be working in Skyward for attendance. Going forward, please do it electronically. And if you could do it retroactively for hours one, two, and three, that would be very appreciated. Thank you. Long story short now, I don't like snakes. Don't bring a snake in. You will lose points. See you tomorrow.